All right, <laughs> here we go. Moving on to the next one. A little bit tougher now. The graph of y equals the cube root of x is shown below. Okay, and we already talked about this in the, the notes tutorial, uh, 7.1 uh, notes, 7.1.2. So now we're asked which of the following is the graph of y equals negative 3 times a cube root of negative x minus 5. We have a lot going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to rewrite this equation. So we have y equals negative 3 times a cube root of negative x. Keep in mind this minus 5 is not underneath the radical, okay? There's, there's, a, like a, there's a separation there, okay? So that makes it a little easier for us that there's some separation. And we're going to find out later, if you guys are familiar with transformations, that this is just going to be our y-intercept, okay? But we'll get that. We'll get there in a second. Okay, first, let's think of what are some values. Let's pick like four values that we want to use for cube root function, okay? Which values make it easy to take the cube root? Of, okay, so zero is one. Zero is normally going to be one. And unlike square roots, we can choose negative values. That's what this graph right over here is showing. We can choose negative values, and they're good for cube roots. But for square roots, we can't take the square root um, and get a real number of a negative number, okay? So zero is a good answer. Negative one for square roots or cube root is a good answer, and positive one is a good answer. Okay, so those are some values that we want. Let me move this over and make it gold like we did before. So uh, let's call it negative one, zero, positive one, and then eight. Eight is a good number. Okay, so we have we have five values we can play around with. We're probably not going to use all of them, but um, these are kind of where we're working with here. This is what our, these are our values for x that we want to try. Or not the values for x, but this is what we want to get underneath the radical, okay? Because those are things we can easily take the cube root of. So let's go ahead and get started. So luckily, it's just a negative x underneath the radical, so this makes it a little easier for us. Let's get x. Mm, I'm going to choose the orange color. Let's get X and then a blue Y like we had before. Okay, so now I need to pick values of X and I don't have to do what I did before to figure out what I need to get under the cube root because it's just a negative X and you can take the, the, the negative just changes the, the sign and we can take negative cube root. So we're pretty much good. We're gonna input uh, essentially directly these values of X, okay? So which value of X are we gonna pick first? So with negative three and let's just start with negative eight. Let's work our way down cube root of negative, you have to include the negative sign then. that's part of the function and then we're going to put our negative 8 in parentheses okay that's really important and then minus 5 so we are inputting directly negative 8 into our function because we can take that cube root okay so we're going to simplify so y equals negative 3 and then I'm going to go ahead and not simplify this all the way yet. 3, we have a negative negative 8, that's positive 8, minus 5. y equals negative 3. The cube root of 8 is 2. That's why we picked negative 8, because we knew that a positive 8 or a negative 8 will give us a perfect cube, minus 5. We have to do order of operations, so make sure you guys do this first. Okay, those are just small little mistakes that you can reduce if you're careful. Negative 6 minus 5, we get y equals negative 11. Okay, so negative 11. So negative 8, negative 11. So we know if we go to our graph, it's going to be oof, way down here somewhere. Okay. Let's just verify we did all that correctly. Negative 3 times positive 2. Okay, it looks like we're good. Okay, now let's go ahead and choose our next value because that's not even on our chart. Um, we're going to need something else. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. We're going to choose a new value of x. I like those parentheses, though, because we know we're going to be inputting uh, negatives and positives in there. And let's erase this other stuff. Okay, so now that we've chosen negative 8, we got that checked off. Check, we checked that one. Let's go ahead and plug in negative 1. So now we have y equals negative 3 times the quantity of the cube root of negative negative 1 minus 5 all at the end. Okay? So let's simplify this one. y equals negative 3 times the cube root 
of negative negative 1 is positive 1 minus 5. What times itself? 3 times equals 1. Well, that's negative 1. Or sorry, just positive 1. Didn't mean to say, ne didn't mean to say negative. So now we have negative 3 times 1. That's a cube root of 1 minus 5. Order of operations, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 minus 5. Y equals negative 8. So, oops, forgot to put that. We plugged in negative 1 for x. Check, plug that in. These are our x values. Let me put that x values. And normally, there, I mean, we have to be careful. These are the values we wanted underneath the square root, which actually turned out to be the actual value of x because we weren't adding or subtracting underneath the radical, okay? This is just a little bit different than the previous example. So we have negative 8 that we got. So negative 1, negative 8. So right there there okay we're getting an idea but let's plug in i don't know let's do at least two more sorry this video is going a little bit long but i think it's important to be thorough here okay all right so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in zero into this function okay so we're going to plug in zero and what do we get? Let's simplify. Well, let's plug in 0. I'm plug in 0. Okay, and simplify. y equals negative 3 times the cube root of 0 minus 5. Okay, y equals negative 3 times 0 minus 5. y equals negative 3 times 0 is 0 minus 5. y equals negative 5. Okay, remember at the beginning I said this was going to be our y-intercept? Well, that's what I'm talking about, okay? So our graph is going to insert this. Anytime a, a constant is by itself, adding or subtracting, it's not being multiplied by x or any other variable, that's going to be our y-intercept, okay? So that's one way you can kind of see um, the what the graph is doing pretty quickly, okay? So... As we're doing these problems, you can eliminate bad choices right away. So A is a bad choice because its y-intercept is not negative 5. B might be a correct choice, okay, because its intercept is negative 5. C might be a good choice because it's negative 5. And D might be a good choice. So what we're going to do is we're down to B, C, and D. But because we already plotted some points here, okay, we recognize that our graph, whoops, it's a kind of out of sorts. We started up here. Our graph started way low and is going up, okay? So which one starts way low and then goes up? Clearly D is our correct choice. So I hope this was a little bit helpful. We did not use some of the transformation rules that make this a little bit shorter, but this will make it so that anybody, no matter your level, will be able to complete this exercise. Hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time.